Hey everyone and welcome to my craft room. My name is Julianne Richards and the independent Stamping Up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Um, this is the tutorial video for my January fun fold class. Um, for those ladies who do my class uh, this month is a true fun fold. There's three fun folds there uh, after a couple of months of being um, not particularly fun fold but uh, uh, definitely uh, pretty cards. We've definitely gone back to uh, back to form here and we've got three really um, nice fun fold cards for you. Um, I'm just going to work through all three cards in the same video, just go from start to finish hopefully uh, and you'll, uh, you'll be able to follow along and make your cards as well. Keep in mind we will have, um, for those of you who wish to, we'll have a, uh, an optional Zoom session uh, later in the month for you to, um, to make them, the cards along with the group. Okay, so I've got my kits here with the cards on the front. These are the three cards we're doing. I've got a, a, a sort of accordion card here with the beautiful um, celebration paper. Oh, actually, all three cards um, feature celebration papers from the January to April 2023 celebration um, uh, freebies. Uh, of course, you could substitute any paper you happen to have. These fun folds would, would translate really, really well. Um, so we've got an accordion card here. We've got a Dutch double gate fold and we have, this one's called a joy card, a joy fold card. I'm, I'm not quite sure whether that's because it brings joy or because somebody called Joy invented it. But um, yeah, so that's our, our third card there. We might as well start on the right and work across. So we'll start with our accordion card. Now for this card I have featured... And I'm searching desperately around for my mini catalogue, which I can't find. One of the um, $180 freebies, or free with $180 purchase, designer series paper from the um, from the catalogue. Um, any paper, any 12 by 12 paper would do, because you're basically using a 6 inch by 12 inch piece to form out a really beautiful accordion. And it helps if you like both sides of the paper because you will actually see both sides. You could pop some decoration and stuff on those central panels as well. And another option is to glue those two panels together. So you form something that looks a bit more like a book if you don't like that sort of whole accordion look. As I say, just glue that central panels together and you get something a little bit more um, condensed or, or um, compact. Okay, so let's do this. As I've got two sets here because I've actually got my set for the zoom as well so I have to fish them out from each other. I'm using a different paper everyone will have um, a combination of the papers from the pack I'm using um, all of them up uh, so you'll have something different you may have this pretty uh, coastal cabana one or you may have the pink one or the blue one or there's a nice um, sort of um, pale papaya one as well so you should have your card base which is just a flat, flat piece of cardstock you've got your designer series paper which has already been scored and cut you've got some pretty little daisies so you might have them in the, the theme color for your card or you may have them in white a white panel there for our inside sentiment you've got a oval from the fitting florets die set. You've got another oval that will form the background of that one. And you've got a couple of punched leaves. This uses the, I think it's boughs and leaves and leaves and twigs or something, punch. Anyway, that's all right. One of the punches that's in the current catalogue. I actually love using punches on my classes because it's just so much easier just to go punch, 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 punch rather than pop things through the die cutting machine. So, and you'll have some bling as well, but I obviously haven't given myself any bling for this. I'll grab some in a second. Okay, so not much really complicated with this little card. You decide which side you like the best. So I'm going to go with this really sort of because the one you're going to see most of is the one that's facing the front you will see a tiny bit of the back but that's it so I'm going to keep this nice sort of plaid check at the front you need to glue the, the, the largest panel to your card base so pop some glue around there so there's a this is a 
that's a score at four inches. So this is a four inch wide um, layer. And you, you just glue that to your card base. And that gives the card some strength. So it'll stand up nicely. So there we are there. That's, that's the card. So the card base on the back and then the, the, cons, the accordion. I'm going to say accordion, it's easier will come out the back, out the front there like that. Now, as I say, at this stage, you could glue those two central panels together just to form like a book, or you can leave it as the concert, as the accordion. Okay, so we'll keep moving on with this. I'm going to now do our, look at my original, or I don't know what I'm doing. We're going to pop our frame and our little oval together so that they can sit on the front like this. So of course we're only going to glue the oval to the to the the most the frontmost panel, which is only a part panel. So we're going to only glue um, you know, the left hand side of the oval. Don't want to glue it to all the card. You have a terrible sticky mess. First of all, we're going to add our frame to that oval. Now it might be best to actually add rather than putting your glue on the frame where you, it's not going to be. I'll show you doesn't fit over the entire frame you can see if you pop glue on the outside of that frame you're going to get it everywhere because it's not going to fit, stick to your oval probably best to add the glue to the oval itself and stick and, and stay as close to the edge as you possibly can because that's the part that's going to stick to your frame so just around the edge close to the edge all the way around here we are so i've just got glue right on the very edge of that then bring in your little frame and position it in place and if you get any glue that sort of oozes into the center which you might well have just grab a cloth or a tissue or something just push that off and there you have your little oval inside your frame. It might ooze a little bit at the back as well, so just get that off as well. There we are. So now we're going to pop our sentiment on that. Get my other card out. I designed these cards a while ago, as usual, and sort of spend a lot of time mucking around and forget what they actually are. Okay, so since I've got the sort of coastal cabana version of the card i'm actually going to put my sentiment in bermuda bay which is sort of a darker blue green color i'm going to use since we've used the um, fitting florets for the frame there i'm going to use the wishing you wishing wishes for a beautiful birthday there so that one fits in our oval really nicely wherever it is there now, because we're going to bring, and I'll show you the original again, we'll bring it back in. We're going to be putting our little flowers and leaves and things on this bottom left-hand corner of the frame. Probably keep your sentiment up a bit. And I, yeah, probably up a bit works because it's um, you don't have to go over to the right too far, but just keep it to the, the top sort of portion of the, of the frame just so you don't cover it over with your flowers when we bring them in. Just towards the top a wee bit. There we are. There we are. Okay, so now we'll attach that to our to our card base. And as I say, we're only attaching it to that front bit that faces forward. So only pop your glue on the left hand side. Bring that in and Put it sort of central overall in the whole card. Make it as central as you can and as straight as you can. There we are. And that just attached to the front there, so no glue on the back. And that's why it's important if you've got glue that's sort of oozed on there, just make sure you uh, clean that off as well. Okay. 
Right, so let's bring in our little daisies now. So we've got two little daisies there. You may have daisies that match the, as I've mentioned before, you may have daisies that match the colour of your card base. If you've got one of the pinks or I think the pinks and the pale papayas, I used the card base, but I felt with the blue and the green, the, the uh, white daisy would, would be nicer, more of a contrast. So if you see what I've done there, you've probably watched me with my daisies a million times. Just grabbed the daisy and my bone folder and very carefully between thumb and bone folder, just give them a wee bit of a kink, just so they look like a little, a little bouncy spider when you look at them there. Just popped a tiny bit of glue. You don't have to, of course, you can leave your daisies flat. Um, but I like to give them a little bit of a natural curl. Glue your two little daisies together like so. And then we're going to just glue them onto the bottom left-hand corner of our card just there. As I said, that's why we've popped our sentiment up a wee bit so it doesn't get covered over. I'm just going to glue that down there. Just hold it for a couple of seconds so it takes. Okay. Now, if you have a little um, embellishment or something like that, you could pop in the centre of that. If you have a punch, like a hole punch that punches um, circles, you could make a little um, yellow circle there. I haven't included that with the set because I figured you could use one of the little embellishments that I've sent you. But if you prefer to use a, a little circle and you have a little circle punch at home, please, please do so. I don't actually have a stamping up one, so I don't tend to go out with it too much. Okay, so you've got a little sort of two little, um, these would be granny apple green leaves. So we're going to pop those in as well. So I might pop one up here. I'm going to cut this one in half so I've got the leaves that I can use. Take that one out. Pop this one in with a bit of glue under there. And the other one. I have to trim his little end a bit. Pop him under here. Keep him out a bit so he doesn't cover over our sentiment. Just trim that little leaf a bit so it doesn't look like an afterthought. Looks like an actual leaf. Here we are. And I don't know that we want to use this one. I don't know that I want to, but you guys can choose. I'll pop him in there. No, I think I've got enough happening there, maybe down in there. Yeah, it's up to you. Up to you whether you use that second little one or not. I'm just going to leave it off. It's just that the punch, I'll show you the punch, actually punches out both anyway so I gave you both just in case you wanted them but I'm going to actually leave that off I think I think there's enough green happening there without without that one so we'll pop that aside for later okay so that's our the front of our card we might bring in our bling as I say I've given you now there's a bit of a warning for the ladies who watch the videos I know some of you don't you just come along to the um come along to the zooms for the ladies who watch the the videos all your bling is in I think it's in with this card actually so don't go mad using all the bling in this particular card you've got nine iridescent gems and you're supposed to use three on each of your cards I just found it easier when I was cutting up the the little plastic holders to actually pop everyone's bling on the same in the same card but obviously you need to ration it out um, to the uh, to to across all three designs 
Okay, so I'm going to pop this, the largest of the bling. I'm going to pop that in the centre of my little daisy just to give it a bit of a bit of a focal point. There we go. And then the other two. I'll pop them around there as well. Okay, so that's the front of that one decorated. I put that bling aside. Okay, so only three bling, as I mentioned, three bling per card. Pop those away so I don't lose them. Okay, one more thing to do with this card is grab your um, white rectangle. It's going to be for your inside. Um, sentiment so we're going to pop that on the back panel there and you just want to make sure that it sneaks in behind well I like to not to have it just so you can't see it from the outside just so it's hidden slightly so that's where I want to put that little piece of cardstock just some glue and you can pop bring in a, a second sentiment and um, pop that in there as well so it might mean you're slightly off centre um, with that, but I think that's probably more more important that you don't see it from the outside. If it worries you that it's slightly off centre, want to just chop a tiny bit off the side so that it's slightly narrower and you can hide it in there nicely. Okay, so that's for your inside sentiment. I might bring one in. So we've got. Wishes for a beautiful birthday, and then we might pop um, so lucky to call you friend on the inside. That's a nice one. We all need friends. Grab a block. Crash bang. Again, I've got my Bermuda Bay there. You could just go with a, oh, hopefully that's, oh, that's too wide. I can't use that sentiment. It's actually too wide for my, my um, too wide for my little panel. That's not going to work. So we'll use for a special person on a special day. That's my favourite one from this set. Beautiful. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so that's card number one for today. There we are. Okay, really sweet. Okay, so we'll pop that one away. That's card number one. Pop it in here with my other set for the, for our Zoom. And the original. And we'll go to card number two. We might do our Dutch double gate this time. This is, I think this is my favourite. The next one really love this because I really 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 love the paper this is the favored flowers from another design um, celebration freebie for January to February January to February yeah um, 2023 I was just trying to get confused with the date sometimes the mini catalog goes from January to April the celebration goes from January to February and the annual catalog goes to May it's all so many different dates to remember okay so we've got this little card it flips up there with a panel if you've never seen a, a Dutch fold a double Dutch gate fold before or Dutch double gate or something like that but anyway that's what it is it's got a little that's a little gate at the front there and when it sits up these two little gates are open and they sort of rest there and they keep that that front flap up 
a bit. So it looks really cute. It just sort of sits up like, like that. And that's what you see. Um, there'll be a mix of these as well. Some of you will have this pretty um, Calypso coral paper and some of you will have the pretty, um, uh, what is it, the purpley one, the uh, fresh freesia. So um, just as just as nice as each other, um, and you, with the black the black background in this paper is absolutely glorious. So I'll just get my bits out. As again, I've got two. I haven't done my fuzzy cutting. Better do my fuzzy cutting. You might have to sit here and watch me do my fuzzy cutting. Put that one away. That one looks a bit too fussy. We'll do that one. And then that, I've got two of those. You've got two of those. You've got your gate. Yep, we've got a scalloped circle and a strip for your sentiment. I think that's about it. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly do my fussy cutting, which I probably should have done before we got together. It won't take two seconds. They're not overly complicated and I'm not overly fussy. Because we're going to have this on a black background, and the paper has a black background it's not going to be the end of the world if you decide to be a little bit less fussy fastidious um, i'm going to cut those two buds off i know that sounds like a terrible waste but i think i just want the flower and its leaves in this one plus it's quicker Okay, there we are. That's about as fussy as I'm going to get with that one. So we've got our flower. Okay, so let's pop this one together as well. Oh, we should also have a white panel for the inside. Phew, thought I nearly didn't give it to myself. There we go. Okay, so we might as well get started. What you need to do is grab this, this piece, which is the gate. Okay, and we're going to stick that onto our um, card base, first of all, first up. So just grab some glue on the back and pop that straight onto there okay now try very carefully to line it up either side and at the bottom so that it's directly in line okay so there we've got that there okay that looks a bit messy with that strip across the bottom but that's exactly why we have our piece of white um, cardstock. We're going to pop that, oh, don't drop it, Julianne. I'm going to pop that straight over that little seam and only the trained professionals could see that they aren't one single piece of cardstock. Well, that's what I'm, my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so that's where we are. So that's basically the inside of the card. We've got the gate. So they now fold in and over it and across that piece of white cardstock. They should meet pretty much perfectly in the middle. And when this one comes down, it should meet them as well. So it sort of forms a, a perfect block once they're together like that. Okay, so that is our basic gate fold card. Now we can start with the fun stuff. Okay, so you've got a piece of design the series paper, either the, as I say, the Calypso Coral or the um, uh, Fresh Freesia. We're going to pop that on that top front-facing panel, the sort of pretty flowers, just straight on there like that. Then you've got the two matching colours here with the, um, you'll have either the Fresh Freesia or the, the um, I think this is a very pale Calypso coral. It might be pale papaya. There you go. Or one of the pinks. Anyway, might be blushing bride. We're going to pop that with the the tone on tone, or the tone design forward like that. So one there. And one on the other gate. Just there like that. Try and line those up with each other so they look 
continuous so they've got a bit of a black in the middle obviously but so they're on the same level there okay so that's our I designed the series paper. Last thing to do now is to bring in the circle. So what you need to do is pop the circle on there so that it sort of looks like it's in the centre of your card. So the sort of the same distance top and bottom and left and right, but you need it to overlap the bottom of the card a wee bit, the bottom of this front flap, it needs to overlap it so that it catches on these little doors when it's open so it needs to pop out in there a wee bit so that being the case we only want to put glue on the top top say top three quarters of it which is going to be on the top flap so just sort of that way make sure you orientate it right make sure I get it right there and pop that on there so as I say again same distance left and right roughly the same top and bottom you might be a little bit further down than you would normally go but you've got that little piece of overlap there like that okay so that's our quite strike a striking black background there so you've got your um, little flower that we fussy cut I'm going to pop that onto that black and just try and work out what's the best orientation for your card might pop that there. We're going to pop this. I'm just checking my design. Yep, we're going to pop this onto some dimensionals just to give it a bit of height. So pop some dimensionals on the back there. And then we think about our sentiment. So I've given everyone a strip of white cardstock varying lengths I think you'll probably find I think they're about three inches long about half to five eighths of an inch wide I've given everyone slightly bigger than I think they will need basically so you can um, use whatever sentiment you like I'm quite happy with that orientation what have I done I might go that way instead okay so there's my flower on there so yes, back to the sentiment. So you've got just a varying lengths of, of card, um, just so you can choose what sentiment you may like. I'm going to go back to my framed florets and use just a little reminder that you are loved, which is here. I'm just going to use black ink because that's the striking base colour of this card. And then once I've got that sentiment on, I can trim it back to um, the desired length so entirely up to you what sentiment you use on there but I'm going to trim that little end bit off I am also going to bring in my border um, my is what is it my punch that I use to trim a little banner in that one I'm going to use that just on the end of the sentiment that shows just to give that a little bit of interest yep that's fine and I'm going to trim the excess off the end as well okay the sentiment is going to sit in hmm, it's not going to sit very carefully with this one is it the sentiment is going to sit going from about the centre to the right. Now I haven't got enough flour to actually cover that so what I'm going to have to do is not because I like to and I'll show you the other one. I like, should have put my leaves where my first thought was. I just like to hide the end of the sentiment box up under that flower so it looks like it's emerging. But with this one the flower doesn't actually have any convenient leaves there. I wonder if I could get a leaf. Maybe I cut myself a spare leaf. Where are those little buds? Hang on. I've had an idea. If I pop the buds in there, I can use them to hide my sentiment. There you go. Thinking on my feet. So there's a hint for this card. Make sure if you want to hide the sentiment up and under, make sure that you leave 
a convenient placed leaf so you can do so. Otherwise, probably just leave your sentiment box whole. But I will leave, I will use these little buds as my convenient hider if that works. Let's see if it works. As I said, because it's black on black, it doesn't really matter too much if I'm not particularly fussy. I have to bring them in there, see where I'm heading with this, and then hide that under there. Yeah, that might work. I'll hide that under there, comes out to the left. I have to make that a wee bit shorter, because otherwise my card's going to overhang too far. That there, that there. Yep, yeah, that works really well. So there we are, that's what I'm going to do hide that end behind those there that's what's going to happen but I do have to therefore pop these on some dimensionals just so they match the flower Made that exceptionally difficult for myself, haven't I? There we are. So that's where I want those buds. Now I'll pop some dimensionals on my sentiment box and pop it in as well. Then the only thing to do is our bling. There we are. So now the only thing to do is our bling again. The, using the bling from the original from the from the original envelope. Don't don't use them all on one card. You'll regret it later. So I'm going to use big and large. I might just big and large. Let's get those out. The large ones. And let's pop those around. Where did that go? So that's our double Dutch double gate. That's what it is. That's our Dutch double gate fold card. There we go. Really, really pretty. And as I say, opens up like that. Okay, there we go. I think we've just lost our focus a bit. Come on, focus back. There we go. So there we are. So that's card number two. I like that one. That's my favourite. Okay. So let's go to card number three. So this is our farmyard card. Really bright, pretty card. Perfect for a, a, a child or young person who loves farm animals. It would be really, really nice. As I say, it's called a, what I found it under was called a joy fold card. And why it's called that is anyone's guess, but there you go. So that it opens up. It's got double, I'd call it a double fold card, I think. Or something like that so it folds out like that okay some really pretty designer series paper now this is uh, from the celebration freebie as all of our cards are and this one is called um, day on the farm it has some pretty pretty colors and some really cute little animals i've used a fair bit of it since i got it it's free with a 90 dollars purchase so it's, it's not what it's uh, the cheap the Easy, more easily obtained one. Um, I've got to get all my bits. There we go. Okay, so this one's fairly simple as well. It's not going to take us hardly any time. So you've got basically two card bases. 
Okay, so you've got one there that's wider and it's sort of cut off so it's only half on the front and you've got this smaller one which is like a full size. So what you need to do is pop the score for the larger card onto the right hand side so it opens that way from the right hand side and your little card is going to go the opposite way so that opens from the left hand side and you basically just weave them in together so that the doors sort of hug each other like that. So this one open, closes onto that one and then that one closes onto that one. So that's the fundamentals of it. Oh, you should also have a yellow. Have I not given myself a piece of yellow? Ay, 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 Julianne. I haven't given myself a piece of yellow, but I know you will all have it. So we just want a piece of, and I've got to try and find a scrap in my scrap box. But I don't want to break up into a whole piece um, let's see have you got any yellow Julian apologies for this sometimes I forget okay that'll do there so that's a piece of I don't know if that's yellow or coastal cabana but anyway we'll go with that so I'm gonna have to remember how big I made the yellow goodness me and where my trimmer is here it is joys of card making so this is four and an eighth by three, I think. So the piece of yellow must be, we're guessing now, four and an eighth must be four and a quarter by three and an eighth. Let's give that a go and see how good at guessing I am. as good at guessing as you think you are Julian so let's actually measure that and get my trimmer back I think that must be oh okay so that's actually three and a eighth wide and well, I've got the four and a quarter right so it's three and eight so it must be three and eight three and a quarter apologies for that three and a quarter by and a quarter so that should if I've got it right it should sit on your blue card with a little edge of the of the yellow around the edge and that's what I've got now apologies for that okay so the piece of yellow headphones are flipping off now with all the excitement the piece of yellow which for mine actually is a bit oranger than yellow is going to sit on the back of your little mini card we'll call it that okay so just pop some glue on the back of the mini card and glue that to your yellow piece and as i say you should see a slight border of the yellow around the edge a bit of a burnish Okay, so as we mentioned before, this little card is going to come in from the score is going to be on the left and it's going to weave in into that card there. So what you need to do is open this one up, pop some, now pop some glue on the back of your yellow piece, which already has the mini card attached, and just bring that into the back of the card base as straight and as central as you can. Just there, same top, same bottom, same sides and straight. Now if you don't go straight, your two cards will look a bit skewy when you actually interweave them like that. But you bring them in as straight as you possibly can and they sort of open at the right angles to each other. Okay, so that is, the, that is basically, forgive that, that is basically a card base. So that apparently, if you put a look at it in, in Pinterest, is a joy fold card. So let's just get on with our decorating. It's not much to really to this one now. You've got two pieces of the designer series paper, one with yellow stripes and one with chickens, chickens and ducks and weather and um, uh, what's that? Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking weather vane, but it's not quite a weather vane. It's a, anyway, 
Oh, it'll come to me in a minute. I'm too busy thinking cards to think farms. Okay, so the yellow one is going to go on this side. So it's cut perfectly for that. So we're going to pop that. It's got cute vegetables on the back. It's cute. I'm going to pop this one on there. Just like that. And then if we bring the flap forward, our little ducks and and um, and geese are going to go on the front one. Windmill. It's like a windmill. That's what a word I was looking for. There we go. Okay, so it opens up like that and opens up like that. Okay, but together it looks really cute, just like that. Okay, so really all you need to do now is bring in, you've got a white panel and it's perfect for that inside there. So pop that in there, that's for our personal message or another stamp or whatever you want to put on inside. There we are. Okay, Oop, wrong way, there we are. And the final thing to do is you've got a white stitched circle. We're going to pop our sentiment on that. I'm going to use the On the Farm stamp set because that's the, the stamp set that matches our, our cute um, celebration freebie paper. And I'm going to use Thinking Happy Thoughts of You, which is a very cute sentiment. You could use it for just about anything. If I can find it, there it is. Again, just going to use black ink. and straight in the middle okay now i have just glued that to there you could pop it on dimensionals if you want but i'm just going to glue it on i think there's enough layers happening with this card that you don't really need any more height but totally up to you just there like that and I think the little the little ducks and things are basically the the decoration of this card. So you know you don't really need much else. No no die cuts or anything. It's just really cute. Okay, so last part is grab your bling. And again, we've all got iridescent gems. They were the flavour of the month when I was making these cards. Lost my lid. Where's my lid? I want to put the lid on my glue. I'll find it in a minute. It's usually just hanging around. There it is. There we go. So there we are. So just grab your gems, your iridescent gems, and pop those around as well. And that card is done as well. So there we are. So that's our joy fold. And if anyone wants to contact me and tell me why they think that's called a joy, a joy fold, then please let me know. Okay, so that is our class for January. This is our fun fold class for January, all completed. Just let me pop those away. We've got our three cards, we've got our joy fold, we've got our Dutch double gate and our cute accordion as well. So hopefully you enjoyed those. That sunbeams decided to come over there just at the last minute. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed those three cards. And um, if you would like any details about the papers that we've used or the stamp sets or dies that we've used, please reach out. As I say, all three cards are featuring celebration free papers for the 2023 celebration um, promotion. So they are wonderful and you can get them for free with a qualifying order, which is even better. Um, anyway, reach out if you would like any of details on any of those. If you'd like to do future classes, please let me know. I have my email address on my YouTube channel or you can pop onto Facebook and just send me a message. Um, but I'm happy to include you on the list for future classes. Um, thanks for joining me and I will see you all again next time.